Hi all, and welcome back to this course on C Sharp and XUnit. In this video, we're going to be going over how we can check if something is null and something is not null. And to do this, we're going to introduce the concept of transactions into our bank account. The idea being that every payment you make now becomes a transaction. So let's start off by making a transaction class. And this class is going to have three properties. We're going to store the amount spent as a decimal. We'll just call this amount now. No. Amount set. We're going to have a date time for the date time of transaction. A date and time of transaction. And we're also going to have a status. But to do that, we will create another class or an enum, shall I say, for the transaction status. I'm going to call this transaction status. And this can have three statuses. We can have accepted, we can have pending, and we can have declined. And back in our transaction class, we will just say public transaction status, status, uh, get set and to make it a little bit easy for ourselves we'll also create a constructor for this and this will accept a decimal of amount a date time of a date time transaction and a transaction status of status and then in here we'll just set those so amount is now equal to amount date and time of transaction is equal to Data type transaction and status is to not done the wrong way around. Status is equal to status and I think the same with this one as well. There we go. So now we've got our transaction class. What we want to do is go to the account class and start writing some functionality for this. So we'll start off by making a new Read only list of transactions. A list of. Oh, we need to put this in the class. Do, 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 do. Uh, transactions. And we will call this underscore transaction. And for now, we'll just set it equal to a new list of transactions. And we will import our list. Now, we're going to need two constructors. We're going to need our default constructor, which will at the minute do nothing. And we will need another constructor, which will take in a transaction. And in here, all it will do is add this transaction to the list of transactions. So now we've got our setup, let's carry on and add some logic. Now, the logic we're going to add is to get the most recent transaction. So we can do that by adding another function that returns a transaction. I will call it get most recent transaction. It will take no arguments. And all it will do is we will return from, it should be called transactions probably, change that to transactions. Transactions and transactions dot all by descending and then we will have routine to t dot date time transaction dot first to default and what this will do is order the list by the date of time or order by descending and then return the first one it finds if it can't find one it will return null and now we can go and start writing a test for this so we'll start by creating a fact and it's public void and to follow the same format we'll say what should we call this uh, given retrieving latest transaction when there are no transactions should return null. 
And what we can do for this is we can create a new account. And then we can say var result is equal to account dot get most recent transaction. And then to check if this works, we can say assert, and we want to assert that it is null. Then we can just pass in our result. And maybe it's better if we change that name of result to most recent transaction. That makes no sense. Now, if we run this and run all our tests, you'll see that they all pass. Now, to check the other one and check that, well, if there is a transaction that it returns that it's not null, we can do fact and this time public void and given retrieving latest transaction. When there is a transaction, should return the transaction. And what we'll do here first is we'll create a new transaction. A new transaction. And remember for this, we need to pass in an amount, so it's a 10. We'll pass in a date time, so we'll pass in a a new date time and make it uh, 2020 or one and it will also pass in a status so a transaction status and say this one was accepted and what have I missed? Oh, I've missed a bracket, I've missed a bracket and a comma and there we go and now we need to create a new account. That account is equal to a new account. But this time we need to pass the transaction in. And now when we call account dot get most recent transaction, what we should find is if we name the variable bar most recent transaction, perfect. We should now be able to assert that this is not null. For the most recent transaction and run it, you should see that it passes. Now, just to be sure that you've got the right transaction, and in this case it wouldn't matter because there's only one, but that for argument's sake, so there's a few, we can do an assert dot equal, and we can start asserting that the statuses are what we expect. So we can say, okay, we expect that the transaction status dot accepted is equal to the most recent transaction dot status and we can do this again but this time we'll do this three times but this time we'll do it with we expect the number 10 because that is our most recent transaction dot amount and here as well I'll just copy this date time because this is what we're expecting this is our expected and in our amount we have most recent transaction dot the entire transaction. So if you were to run all these, then you can see they all still pass. And that's going to be the end of this video. So again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.